Orm's coming. Where's the end? Alien Covenant was directed by Ridley Scott, and it stars Michael Fassbender, Danny McBride, Dr. Manhattan, that chick from Inherent Vice, and Bob the Mexican from Hateful Eight, and some some morphs of the Xeno kind, and some other kinds. So let's let's see how many people will watch this one because uh, Alien Covenant came out like a month ago, something like that. But I wrote this up a while ago, and. Figured, you know, why not? Let's just, let's shoot it. Let's just do this thing. Let's do it quickly, too, because I had to turn off the AC to, to you know, help sound and things. So it's going to get real hot in here real quick. Anyway, if you're looking for a Prometheus sequel or an Alien prequel, you're kind of in luck because it's about half of either of those things. It's not fully either of those things. It's, it's, it's a little bit of both. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Alien Covenant follows the crew of the Covenant. This ship is a part of a colonization mission to go start a society somewhere else. Carrying a crew of 14 with 2,000 colonists in cryosleep because fuck you, alien. The crew is awakened from cryosleep by a weird thing that happens when they receive a distress call from a planet that is conveniently inhabitable for humans. Then... An alien movie happens. <laughs> Oddly enough, I enjoyed this film a lot more than my sarcasm lets on. I enjoyed the characters in Alien Covenant way more than I enjoyed the characters of Prometheus. But I didn't enjoy the characters of Prometheus, so I don't know what exactly that tells you. Though Michael Fassbender did give an enjoyable performance in Prometheus as the AI character, and he's back again as an AI character, and he pretty much carries the thing. I'll talk more about his performance and the things his character is involved with in the spoiler section because he gets pretty deep into spoilers. But Fassbender did have a lot more to do in this movie than I originally anticipated. And he was able to show the range that we all already knew that he had. Which is surprising because this is, you know, an alien movie. The performance that surprised the hell out of me though was Danny McBride. And pretty much everything he's ever been in, he's always just played Danny McBride. Which sometimes can be enjoyable, but for the most part, it, it's not much more than that. For a while, he's a fun comic relief character that contrasts the typical stark and serious alien characters pretty well. But then there was a scene where I was like, oh boy, Danny McBride's gonna try acting. Look out, everybody. And my sass was like, instantly shot down because he did it. He took the scene and he carried it. So I take back any of my doubts about Danny McBride being an actual actor. And I never thought I'd say this, but Danny McBride really should be cast in more serious roles. Katherine Waterston is another standout in this film. She's kind of a new up and comer. She's great in Inherent Vice and Steve Jobs. And in this, she plays Ripley 3. But the thing with her character in this was there was some actual background. Like there was some actual character details to her that made her a little bit interesting. And that mixed with a pretty good performance made her easy for the audience to get behind. Everyone else is kind of throwaway. I mean, they were well acted and had enough back and forth to show that there is a history between these characters. But it was very apparent which characters were the heroes. The only other one worth noting, I think, would be Billy Crudup's character. He was the man of faith and kind of added an interesting dynamic in the group. There was a really good scene early in the film between him and Waterston's character, which was an argument on whether or not they should go check out this new planet, and both sides had a pretty valid argument. It really made you put yourself into that situation, which was really cool, and it was very difficult picking a side in it. This is where the film exceeded Prometheus for sure. Scenes of building character and putting the audience in those characters' positions were really well done. The story itself was very interesting and easy to sink yourself into. It was a very immersive plotline they were giving us. And I was honestly really enjoying where it was going until it finally sunk in. Wait, 
this is an alien movie. Ah, shit. And when I remembered that, I was kind of dreading the alien involvement into the plot. And, like, not in the good way. The movie takes a drastic turn in the logic of the character's actions just to make the alien thing happen. This is the same problem I had with Prometheus. Granted, it was much more of a problem in that film. Hey, baby. Both are great movies with thought-provoking plots until everything turns stupid and decides to be a cliched horror flick. Don't get me wrong though, this is miles above Prometheus. Even though Ridley Scott helmed both films, his skill is much more prominent here. He's a big name when it comes to directors, and there's reasoning behind that. Directing things such as Blade Runner and the original Alien, he still has some chops. The film was gorgeous to look at and was better shot than any other modern big budget horror movie. And just like all other Alien movies, the set was beautifully well-crafted with a surprising lack of noticeable CG, which is always a plus with me. The practical effects were also pretty badass. They mix CG with practical very well when it came to the creatures. It also had probably some of my favorite kills in like the entire Alien franchise. Like the way that they kill off characters in this movie goes pretty hard. Also, when I heard there was going to be a new Xenomorph design, I just, I like knew I was going to hate it, but surprisingly enough, I kind of really dug the, the Neomorph. Also, whenever I hear the name Neomorph, this is all I can think of. Whoa. <laughs> the first trailer that was released for this made this seem like it was an Alien remake. Like it was like a soft reboot of the Alien franchise. Like when I saw the trailer, I was like, this is just Alien. You're just showing us Alien. I don't want to see this because I've seen Alien. <laughs> I have it right there. It's right. Oh, you can't see it on the camera. It's right here. I like the Alien franchise. And by franchise, I mean I like the first two Alien movies. <laughs> Alien is a movie that I've seen before, is what I'm trying to say. And when I saw the trailer for this, I was like, I don't, I don't want to see it again. Luckily, it was much different than that. And it had a pretty intriguing plot that I can't really get into without talking about spoilers. But before I do that, I will tell you that the third act turns into, well, a cliché horror movie. And what I mean by that is it follows a lot of cliché tropes that we've come to expect in the Alien franchise. And it's something that I'm really conflicted about. A part of me wishes that they stuck with the interesting plotline and, and like only focused on that without adding in all the cliché alien shit. But then the other part of me remembers I paid for a ticket to see Alien Covenant. This is an alien movie that I'm going to see. I know exactly what I'm getting into, so can I really be mad about that? Considering that, I let a few cliches pass. But there were just a few scenes where the characters just got, like, way too stupid. Like, things got really dumb really fast for a movie that, on the most part, was actually kind of smart. Uh, that was a burp, by the way. To give a full idea as to why I'm giving the film the score that I'm giving it, I need to bring you to the spoiler corner for a second. So if you haven't seen Alien Covenant yet, look away, turn your eyes, and skip ahead to this time. I'll leave it here for a second. You got it? You got it? Okay, cool. So if you've seen it, or you don't want to see it, or if you're just a complete monster and you want to know the spoilers before you see it, welcome to... The spoiler corner. Like I said earlier, Michael Fassbender carries the goddamn thing. Not only is he here playing a new android, but he's also reprising his role of the android from Prometheus. And the second I saw two Fassbenders on screen, I wanted two things. One, Fassbender v Fassbender. Two, a little, little Fassbender on Fassbender kissing sesh. And you know what? I got both, goddammit. Can I, can I talk about the Fassbender innuendo for, for a second? Like, they spent an entire, like, probably five-minute scene of Fassbender teaching Fassbender how to play a flute. And it was so sexual. Like, like they, they had to know what they were doing, right? Because, like, there's an actual line of dialogue where he says, Let me do the figuring. Like, come on. They know exactly what they're doing. They know. They know exactly what they were doing. Anyway, 
His two characters and their wacky shenanigans are what kept me invested in this film. I loved that opening scene. The scene where, where Prometheus Android is talking to Guy Pierce, Wayland, the creator guy. And and he's like, well, wait, if uh, if I can't die, like you know, I'm a robot, and like I have no limit on life, and you're just a dude who will die. Why are you the master and I'm the slave? Like, what is this shit? And then and then Waylon is like, bring me some tea, and he walks all the way across the room. And he picks up the pitcher and he gives him the tea. Like it was, it was just, it was a really good scene, like visually, and and, and it was just a well written thing. Like the whole movie should have been that scene. Basically, I want Blade Runner. Is what I'm saying. This movie just should have been Blade Runner. <laughs> I was also totally okay with his character being the reason why Xenomorphs exist. Like I was fine with that because he had an interesting plot of like humanity. You know, that's something Prometheus in this movie really delve into is what is mortality? You know, who created us? Who like just creators and creations? And it's just really interesting stuff. And it made complete sense to me, except for the fact that it absolutely doesn't. When you look at the rest of the alien movies, like alien fans are super pissed with this because you know, what about the alien queens? A lot of things don't add up yet. And I don't think anyone's okay with that. Like, even even the mural on the uh, Prometheus ship. What was that? How did they already know what a xenomorph was? I don't get it. I don't get it. Ridley Scott is just kind of an old man. And he, his shit just isn't matching up. But this movie has its biggest faults when it Prometheus's things up. And it just makes everyone a cliche horror movie character. I mean, like, really? Really? If these characters would have just, like, thought? Like, like just used their brains. And wore fucking helmets on this planet nobody's ever been to. Then none of this movie would have happened if they just wore goddamn helmets. <laughs> like, it's the easiest fix of all time. I don't understand why in Ridley Scott's universe... We just keep sending stupid people to space. I mean, maybe that's that's the point of it all. Maybe, maybe in like alien future, we're just like we need to just send stupid people to space to get killed by aliens because we're tired of stupid people here. And just fine, whatever. They don't wear helmets because alien plot has to happen. Whatever. But. When uh, Billy Crudup's character, the captain guy, like the captain, like the guy who's supposed to be the leader of this crew, is following uh, Prometheus Android down into his like little basement area. After we know that Prometheus robot, totally down with aliens, like he's been messing with the genes of aliens, he was talking to an alien that just killed one of his friends, and you, go, you follow him down this basement, and Prometheus robot, is like, I'm trying to perfect this thing, but one thing is missing. And you're like, what is the one thing? And he's like, don't worry about it. Look inside that egg. Is it safe? Yeah, man, no, don't worry about it. Just, just look inside the egg. Well, okay, I am the captain. I will look inside the eggs because I am the captain. And he looks inside the egg and an alien kills him because he looked inside the egg. Like, that's stupid, right? Remember Neil Blomkamp's? alien that was like canceled for this like remember how neil blomkamp had this like totally cool original idea to make an alien movie and then ridley scott was like no see here's the thing with neil blomkamp he has these really cool ideas but sometimes he can't like put them out very well you know like that like shaky cam like documentary style filmmaking really worked with district Nut. but when you use it in something like chappie it kind of falls flat. And with Ridley Scott, he knows how to film a beautiful movie, but he just needs to pick the right scripts to film because I don't think he had much to do with the script of this movie. Like it was written by a couple dudes, none of which were Ridley Scott. So I got to talking with the guy at this coffee shop that I frequent, David. Hi, David. So we got to talking and we figured out how to make a perfect alien movie. You take Neil Blomkamp and you have him write a really good alien script. 
and then you take Ridley Scott and you have him direct it. So it's well written and it's beautifully shot. It's it's it's, it's perfect. I don't understand why they can't just like put the differences aside, get along and make that. Like that'd be really cool, right? Right? That would be really cool. So with this movie, there's a lot going on here and not all of it works, but it looks nice. And there's some really good scenes. And like I said, some of the like gore aspects were some of the coolest in the franchise. So for that, I can't really dock it much. I think it is going to piss off a lot of hardcore fans and it has already pissed off a lot of hardcore fans. But if you're just like a casual fan and you're looking to see a Xenomorph again, it has it along with like some really weird plot points, which is what I really liked about it. Like the things I enjoyed most about it were the well shot scenes, the very weird plot lines that were going on here and just the awesome ways of killing people. So I am going to give alien covenant a 7.3 out of 10. It was all right. You should at least rent it. You know, it's, probably not even in theaters anymore right now with how late this review came out but uh see it when you can see it when you can rent it i'd pay a buck for it anyway thank you for watching tell your friends i exist that would be neat and as always watch movies my friends let's take a drink of water it's water drinking time. Now look at me. You don't want to see me like this.